This is Comic Picks by the Glick. Hey, I'm your host, Jason Glick. Hey, Jason, what do you got on tap for us today? Well, it's like I was honestly kind of like, you know, stumped as to what to do for the next podcast, you know, after doing the last podcast. And then I realized, hey, wait a second. It's like, didn't an event I was interested in just wrap up like on Marvel Unlimited? I mean, like they, by that I mean, like they published all the issues like to the event. It's like, like on the, uh, it's like on the app. And so I was, hey, you know, I can just talk about that. That'll be fine. So here I am to talk about um, Dark Web. Nominally, it's a uh, X Men and Spider Man um, a crossover event because it involves um, villains that are specific to both of them. But really, it's kind of just like a big Spider Man event with the with the X Men just getting their own miniseries, you know, to deal with their, with their um, antagonist like alongside. Now, I got no problems with this because I've been reading and enjoying. Um, it's like the current Amazing Spider-Man series that's been mostly by uh, Zeb Wells and um, John Romita Jr. Wells has, you know, writ written Spider-Man occasionally, it's like over the years, but he also took, like, took a more direct approach with the um, recent Beyond um, storyline. And he's also got some history with the X-Men as well, um, after writing the great um, Hellion series, it's like, like for, for, 18, for 18 issues. So, and um, his and his amazing Spider-Man has been run has been pretty pretty fun. I mean, yeah, he's been putting Peter through some some difficult times, like having him like um try and stop a uh, gang war orchestrated by by Tombstone, dealing with um his newly reformed boss um Norman Osborn. It's like um tackling not one but two hobgoblins at once, and as we're about to see, dealing with his former um with his um former clone ally Ben Riley, who's now the calling himself the villain known as Chasm. But <laughs> for all the, uh, like, you know, like, even if, like, you know, like, it seems like he's, like, you know, been putting Peter through, like, some bad times, like, he never forgets to, like, that, that Peter's, like, a funny, funny guy, it's, like, is always able to, like, you know, to, um, like, give, give us a, like, give us a quip, like, even at the dark, darkest of times, it's, like, and that's kind of what's, like, helped, kept his run, like, more entertaining than, um, than the departed Nick Spencer's, uh, run. Part of not that he's dead, that he's like gone over to Substack to do stuff. But I've been I've been enjoying what they what he and Ramita Jr. and the other artists have been have been doing on this on this series. So I was looking forward to seeing what they're going to do here. And the fact that hey, you know, they're bringing in the X-Men, you know, for the, for this event. Hey, you know, that sounds even better. Oh, and they're also gonna bring in um like um Al Ewing and Ram V's um Venom series as well. Oh, and there's also going to be um, tie-ins to um, like like uh, Miss Mar like a separate Miss Marvel series and separate um, Gold Goblin, which is which is Norman Osborn's um, superhero identity. Um, you can see the air quotes there, and Mary Jane and Black Cat um, five issue miniseries as well. So yeah, this is this is like an event that has a lot of sprawl to it, but um, overall it's not bad, even if the uh, the general thrust of it does kind of like you know have me feeling it's kind of like a uh, light version of a classic x-men event that would be um inferno which is a storyline that basically um like wrapped up the whole madeline Pryor storyline it's like as it's like as she um it's like condemned condemned new york to a uh it's like to an infer it's like to an infernal hell bringing it's like bringing the dimension of the demonic dimension of limbo it's like to to the real world in the x-men both um regular X-Men or uncanny X-Men and X-Factor having to te team up in order to take, take her down and then, and also um, wrap up the, uh, the Mr. Sinister, um, it's like enabled med meddling, it's like of the storyline as well. Like it's, it's one of the X-Men's, you know, like, like best known storylines to the point where the name has been, um, has been revived several times over the years for separate, um, or similar events, and also more recently to uh, cap off um, Jonathan Hickman's storyline as well. Even though that was more of a, we're going to burn it all down, rather than we're going to be bringing the demons to New York. But this, see, this storyline basically does does involve a Madeline Pryor again. because she, she was resurrected as part of the uh, X-Men's um, resurrection protocols. It's like, and it was... And, and as we find out later later on, that was because of Jean Grey, but that's getting ahead of ourselves here. It's like Madeline has always had issues with the fact that she was a clone of Jean Grey. It's like, and she's always and she's always like, you know, had 
like felt that you know, like, I'm not like the fact that people like don't believe I'm a real person. It's like that I'm just a clone. It's like you know, it's always like infuriated in me, and more so, it's like is the fact that you know she never actually got to experience the uh, like the time that she had with um the son she had with uh, with Scott Summers, who who grew up to be Cable, you know. So she's been letting that that um like that that anger fester for a while. And while she's got kind of a, a like a non-aggression pact with the X, X Men that she can't attack directly attack any uh, mutant territories, well, she can't she can't do that directly. But what if she had someone who could um, act as a proxy, like in her like to um to take out her aggression on the X Men for these um for these perceived slights, and maybe even help her get those memories back? Wink, wink. Enter Chasm. Chasm is the uh, is the new supervillain name that that Ben Riley has, has assumed following the events of beyond while he survived the, those events, they left him much worse for the wear specifically in the sense that, that whenever I'm um, beyond, you know, found that, Oh, Hey, he's not acting very Spider-Man like we've got, uh, let's just go and deliver, uh, eliminate some memories. It's like in order to make, make him work better. That basically left, eventually left um, Riley with no, almost nothing to call, call his own in terms of a proper identity. And while he tried to, uh, you know, get Peter, I, you got to give me your memories in order to make me make myself whole. Peter's like, don't do that's that's not cool, man. Um, it, it left it left um Ben feeling you know like really really sad and very angry against our friendly neighborhood Spider Man. It's like at the end, end of that event, and this and it's like and so he eventually feel finds that the that the best way to get that get his get his revenge is to take Spider Man's memories or more specifically his soul. Which you know he eventually because when he finds out that hey you know there's someone else in the Marvel universe who's kind of in the same situation situation as me, like a a, a cast off um clone who's not doesn't have all the memories entitled to them, well hey you know Maddie how you doing what can we what can we do for each other? That's basically the uh, like the starting point for for Dark Web. It's a team up between two characters who both have like um kind of sort of legitimate axes to grind against their like against against their their acknowledge, acknowledge antagonists or our our heroes in this case, and basically it's like like uh, Dark Web starts off with you know it's like with like with uh, New York coming under demonic assault again. It's like the uh, it's like Inferno was was known for how how it brought uh, you know like in at demons demons are infesting inanimate objects. It's like and just you know being just being really really bad really bad assholes to ev everyone like you got like scoot scooters just you know just like you know yelling at people you got um post office boxes um just like scream screaming how they like to take a take a bite out of people and like uh, uh baby carriages you know just trying to like you know take take a much close closer like um lick of the uh the like of the kids that are right writing inside of them it's it's like it, it's rid ridiculous over the top superhero stuff and on one hand, it's like, you know, it's nice, but at the same time, if you've ever read Inferno, like I have, this is going to come off as kind of like a diet version of that. Mainly in the sense that, you know, like, even though, like, the storyline does have its good moments, it's like, it really kind of feels like, you know, hey, like, we've been here, done that, got the t-shirt, and we're kind of playing the hits here. On one hand, Zeb Wells is a solid enough writer that he can get enough good mileage out of that. As I mentioned before, he's good at um, like playing up Spider-Man's like hum like sense of humor over the like, over the course of the course of the event, and it's like and that and that's and that's true true here as well. I mean, but the thing is, like the uh, four issues of Amazing that um, that mark the event between the uh, the uh, Dark Web um, Dawn and the Dark Web Finale issues. It's like it's they're basically kind of like they feel like like they're kind of like specific events rather than just like you know parts of a coherent storyline like issue like um I guess see issue uh issue fifteen oh um Spider Man's fighting Venom again only it's a uh, dumbed down Venom Venom who's had his um mem memory stolen and is like been reset to a classic nineties era Venom who wants to eat Spider Man's brains issue two is the fight against is a specific fight against Chasm which you know it's fine. Fine and all. Issue three is Peter like you know, one, dealing with um, life in demonic limbo, where the where the demons have basically assumed a uh, like a hellish version of his life. It's like in it's like in New York, 
So basically, you've got you know Peter just you know trying to uh, you know keep keep the demons from eating all the people who are close to him who've also been sucked in here as well, including J. Jonah Jameson, who initially is just you know trying to keep keep his cool. It's like as the uh, it's like as the editor of the Demonic Daily Bugle, and that's and that's fun. It's like and especially when especially after you um, things go on for a little bit, and J- Jameson actually gets the gets into the groove of like being a demonic um like uh head of a of a newspaper specifically meaning he basically has to start acting more like himself in order to um, keep from being eaten by all those demons around him it's like and and you know like this all this stuff is good and it's got some great art well mostly great art um well i'm i'm a valid fan of adam kubert who does the uh initial like um dawn oh dawn and dusk issues like alpha and omega issues for this event he's he has more of a, a minimalist style here. Basically, it's just you know, like lot less, um, like less jag- jagged flare and more. It's like you know, I'm just gonna like you know, try and like, keep things as simple as possible. Like try to give things like a purity in their approach. And you know that that kind of works in certain in certain scenes, like the opening bit where like um, Ben Riley is hallucinating like a P- Peter, like an like an evil Peter Mary Jane. You know, just like saying, "Hey, hey!" You know, it's like we're we're gonna take all your stuff. We're gonna take your face. We're gonna take your, your eyes. We're gonna take everything that you own. It's like, I mean, that's kind of fun. But then you get other bits, like when he's the Spider Man's like looking over like the uh, Rockefeller Park, um, ice skating rink, and it's just kind of like, "Oh, this is like really sparse and minimalist," which is not the kind of thing you want to go for for a uh, big dem- um, crossover that involving like lots of demonic stuff. Um, better, however, is um, Ed McGinnis, who does the uh, four issues of Amazing for the like for the core event, and he's always been like a great, big, bold, cartoonish superhero artist, and he does a lot of good stuff here. I mean, even if like you know not everything hits as as well as it could, just because like like we're just kind of playing the hits here, like seeing him like you know have uh, like have Starman face off against Venom. Like him fighting against Chasm, or like all the crazy demonic stuff in issues seventeen and eighteen. It's like there's, like I said, there's a lot of good, good like over the top action here, like courtesy of McGinnis, and he does a lot of a lot of credit for like pulling for pulling that that stuff off. And the thing is, like, if you're just interested in reading the, the spine of this event, because it's basically a Spider-Man story that the X-Men are just you know hanging around on the sides, sidelines in. It's like then you can just like you know get the uh, Spider-Man Dark Web collection, and you'll get the uh, the core of this. I mean, yeah, you'll wonder like you know, oh well, why is uh, the Goblin Queen suddenly uh, cool with like how things wrapped up? Well, yeah, you'll it's like you'll have to read it's like the uh, like a lot of the extraneous material here, which is why I like uh, Marvel Limited. I mean, yeah, it's just like I'm shilling for the uh, app here, but really, it's like I like you know not having to buy a separate collection just to get every single tie-in, you know, for a storyline like this. I mean, I can just, you know, like, go on, it's like, if I don't want to buy, um, like, Spider-Man and, like, the uh, the Black Cat and Mary Jane tie-in issues, I can just read them right here. It's like, and if I want to say that, hey, you know, it's like, like, the, the Black Cat and Mary Jane tie-in issues are it's kind of weird because it's a five-issue miniseries where only the first two issues tie into the main event, then, yeah, that's basically what happens here. Because, you know, like even though it's like they they do show up show up at the end, it's like this is uh the Spider Man the Black Hat Mary Jane stuff basically involves um it's like them being recruited into limbo by the demon Belasco in order to like get, get his soul sword back. Oh, but also um Black Cat is uh hasn't told uh, Mary Jane about the fact that she's kinda she and Peter are kinda sort of dating right now. So her um, bad luck powers are subtly affecting uh, Mary Jane's new jackpot, jackpot enabled powers. Um, it's not bad, but at the same time, I don't feel it's like I don't feel too bad that I wasn't able to get like the whole. I was able to read the whole of this miniseries before the uh, it's like you know before recording this. It's like it's fine. It's like and um, like I, I guess um, writer Jim McKay does have a good good grasp on their personalities. But at the same time, it's like it's not really like you know crucial to the event. It's like it's like I guess if you're like you know like invested in the characters or the writer, then yeah, I'm going to check this out. But as far as like you know, as Dark Web is, is concerned, it's not really like that crucial to it. 
A better example of something that is like, you know, not crucial to the event, but still, you know, action, but is actually entertaining are the uh, two issues of Gold Goblin um, that, w- that were specifically meant to tie into the series. Gold Goblin is also a five issue miniseries written by someone like I gen- gen- um, gen- um, genuinely like. That'd be Christopher Cantwell, like who gave us, you know, the uh, She Could Fly um, series of miniseries and the recently talked about, you know, I- Ron Iron Man. Like he's working with Lan Medina on art right here, and this is an interesting miniseries because, well, he, he gets to dig into uh, Norman Osborn, the hero, or at least he's trying to be a hero. Basically, he he acknowledges that he does he, his take on the character like just a good balance between you know someone who is like absolutely guilt ridden, like over the fact that you know like like his sins have been cleansed, like all the bad stuff he did. You know, before before he got shot by the Sin Eater in Nick Spencer's run, well, he he like um, it's like he's not you know, like feel, he's not like you know feeling like he I mean he's not the kind of guy who would commit those sins again. But the thing is, he still's got the memories, so he feels all the guilt, and um, he's just trying, and he um, and he he just tries to like use his like you know, like um, like goblin tech in order to be like a hero. But, you know, it's not going to be easy for him, especially when on um, the person who, because this is superhero um, like fiction, like his some um, sins were given to someone else. Ashley Kafka, the uh, like, like the psychiatrist who was like treating um, Ben or in it's like in the Beyond storyline. Well, she was infected with them just to see what would happen. And she turned into the, the new Queen Goblin and Gold Goblin. Specifically, the two issues that tie into Dark Web are all about her making her move against against Norman. It's like, and it's really interesting to see, you know, like, like, because even though like Norman, he's trying to be a good guy, he's still got that you know abrasive, driven, arrogant like persona that you know, like that he's like, I'm going to be a good guy. It's like, and you're, it's like, and you're not going to stop me. That kind of that kind of mentality, right, right here. But he also realizes that yeah, that you know, like. That what he the person he was was a bad person. And he's trying to be better, but he's not sure if he can actually manage that. I mean, obviously he's going to revert to type at some point. I mean, I don't think that you know, like the story that Catwell is telling here is going to do that. But I think he's just trying to like navigate, you know, who Norman is in this specific instance as someone who has all the memories of what he used to do, but is like horrified by them, and wants to be a better person because of them. So I think that, you know, like for these couple issues that I've read, like up to three, like he's um, doing a good job of threat of um, threading that needle right there. Like, will he finish out in the, uh, like in the final two issues? I certainly hope so, but I can say that, you know, I'll, I'm actually going to want to read those issues, you know, rather than, you know, Mary Jane and Black Cat, which, you know, you're probably not going to hear about anything more about them after this podcast. Um, another series that also got roped into uh, Dark Web is um, Venom. Which I have been reading and I have been enjoying, especially since like the the uh, second volume did a great job of setting up where things are going from here. Basically, um, Eddie Brock um, has is lost, has basically become unstuck in time and space, and has found out that you know he that he has basically become his like like a new version of the King in Black, but not just a King in Black, several Kings in Black, and they're all him at several points in his life. I uh, I was waiting to uh, review to read the uh, latest volume of Venom like before I talked about this stuff, but then when I realized that oh well these issues are part of the uh, crossover, well I guess I got to read it now, and I don't think that like the uh, like the issues that make up here are as are as solid as the uh, previous volume of Venom, even though they do have a good solid hook hook to them. Basically, well they have a good solid hook to them, even though they uh, have a expose a big plot hole with this uh like with this event because because uh basically the uh like um the goblin queen has basically recruited venom like as he's become unstuck in time to uh help to basically try and help her out but in order but in doing this you know like she's like you know she wants him to fight fight against spider-man basically just help wear him down for chasm chasm however apparently has special memory draining powers and um, he uses them on Venom in the uh, first issue he's like of the storyline, issue fourteen. And 
Well, it's like they uh, wind up sucking uh, all the uh, like all the memories of of um, Eddie Brock's son Dylan from his head, and so that's how Venom gets um, dumber and angrier. It's like in order to fight against Spider Man, as we see him in the Amazing issue. Thing is, though, it's like you wonder. Wait, wait a second. If Chasm can just like suck memories like that, why doesn't he just suck the memories from from Spider from Spider Man and trying to get him, instead of trying to get him to eat this like demonic fruit? You know, and all. Well, we're just gonna have to not think about that too hard. So there, so there you go. But um, the Venom issues do actually manage to like you know advance a story significantly in the sense that um, Ram V, it's like who was always who's been playing second fiddle to Al Ewing's issues in the like in this um, in this run, actually gets to do something interesting with Dylan. So that we establish, he establishes that you know like that Dylan is now a is actually a son of that of um Eddie and Venom, and and he's also got his own like special powers such as to set um set um symbiotes free from their specific like from their from their places in the chain chain of fate. That's why his new name his new superhero name is called Codex. And the thing is though, the fi- the subsequent issues of this arc are just all about you know like uh, Dylan fighting against his dad who we saw as Bedlam. The um, rage-driven version of himself, like later in, in the storyline, and that he actually becomes earlier in the storyline, like for purposes of this, like of this, of this story, and it's it kind of feels like it's like a bunch of like you know, it's like Eddie's kind of like ah, rah, it's like you're like you're hurting me. Why are you hurting me? It's like it's like and Dylan's like yeah, Dad, why you got it? Why why you try to kill me right there? And that it's like in our like in the early earlier issues, man, it's. Fine, but I uh, and I admit I admit that the you know, like that Ewing and V do a good job of like trying to integrate the dark web storyline into Venom, but it kind of feels like okay, yeah, it's like I see what you're trying to do here. It's like you're trying to give the uh, like Dylan any confrontation we we were like the series is building towards, but it's kind of like, feels kind of like pro forma here. It's like <laughs> more formulaic than actually like you know. Um, Part of the storyline they were telling here. So hopefully they'll be able to get things back on track for the next for the next volume. Oh, and we're not done yet though, because we've also got the two issues of Dark Web, Miss Marvel, which basically involve um like Kamala Khan, who's now working as an intern at like at Oscorp alongside Peter Peter Parker. It's like, but these two issues basically see her deal with um the resurrected version of um it's like of Thomas Edison as a parakeet. Like who was her initial um, antagonist way back in like the first like um, first arc of her arc her arc of her series? It's it's fun. It's goofy fun. Even though I admit that the uh, mo- best part of this of the two issues this two issue tie-in was the uh, was her side of her Jersey Mosque um, coming like um like becoming like um becoming all al- becoming alive. And then just like you know acknowledging that you know hey it's like I'm just really pissed at all the people in my in, like in myself or just like you know so like you know angry at each other that you know it's like i'm just like you know gonna just gonna like you know, walk like walk around until like they until they settle things that was cute and it's overall not a bad not a bad tie-in but it's not really something that's you know deeply important to the miniseries what is actually important to the miniseries and probably like the most like uh significant one of of all the stuff i've talked all the times i've talked about here is the Dark Web X-Men miniseries. Because while the amazing issues, like the spine of the series, like are all about, you know, Spider-Man and Chasm, well, Dark Dark Web X-Men is all about the X-Men dealing with uh, Madeline Pryor. And and it's basically, and to be honest, it's basically just, you know, the three issues of Jerry Dugan's X-Men. Because he's also writing this this series with art from, from Rod Rice and Phil Noto. Um, Rice, Rice's um, uh, presence is very much appreciated in this series because he's he's got a like a very um, heavy um, Bill Sinkovich in, like influence, and that allows that like uh, gives him like you know the ability to, like you know like like dramatize like all the demonic action of this like of of the Sark, even though it's like unfortunately he only il- illustrates like first full issue, half of the second, and he's gone from the from the uh, for the third. Um, Noto. And it was always a solid artist, and while I think he does solid work here, I kind of w- I really would have liked to have seen um, Rice 
um, tackle like the entire like the entire thing. But the entire issue, but these three issues are all about the X Men just dealing with um, the, the threat posed by Madeline Pryor. And there's a lot of like um, fun like fun stuff here. It's like from like like from Jean Grey and um, Ileana um, becoming like you know like um, teenage versions of themselves stuck in a it's stuck in a house, you know, like to be manipulated by um sinister and it's like and and um, Ma- Madeline to uh, like uh, like havoc, who has always had the who's been stuck on Maddie for like the longest time, being um like having to wear her iconic Gob the Queen outfit from the original Inferno storyline, to like Cyclops being um like hamstrung or like being like um imprisoned by the fact that you know. She's hit. She's hung a bunch of uh, innocent puppies a bug in his head. And if he opens his eyes in order to do anything, then the puppies are gonna die. And it's ridiculous, but it's it's good fun. Oh, and also like Forge, I uses his um like his um uh, magical serum like uh, sorry a scientific serum to grow crack um crackling vines like over all the demons in order to stop them. I mean it's it's fun, but the best part is that um in order to like you know, resolve the threat against that Madeline faces, sorry, that Madeline imposes. Well, they decide to actually just, you know, talk it out and hey, and realize that, hey, you know, what she's asking actually seems kind of reasonable. So yeah, that's that's a nice twist and something I really appreciated. And it's like, and that's and so like if you're it's like it's like if you're reading um like X-Men, like yeah, these three issues are definitely Definitely worth reading. Pro- they're, I think they're probably easily the most worthwhile, um, like like storyline for like for this event. Um, it's like, and you know, it's like I guess like any an an ideal, like you know, like collection of this this event would just include the uh, the, the Alpha and Omega issues, the, the Dark Web Dusk and Dawn, um, the four issues of Amazing Spider Man, and the three. X Men, um, Dark Web X Men issues as well. Everything else, it's not bad, but it just kind of like feels kind of superfluous to the, like to the, to the main show. And in the end, um, you know, it's like wraps up, all, you know, wraps up fine. It's like you know, it's like the bad bad guys are punished. Like, well, most of the bad guys are punished. Um, like some of them escape to um, go start in their own miniseries. It's like. And um, we also get like you know recontextualization of um, Maddie's relationship with Limbo. It's like and the world world at large. Oh, and also you know Spider Man and and Ben Riley or Chasm. It's like you know now half like are are now like you know like they're still at odds, but you know things are different now. So we'll see how we'll see how that goes. But so and and like I'm going to keep reading. You know, amazing. I've already read like the two issues that have followed, which are. Like a like a cute little um gate gone wrong with uh it's like with Spider Man and Black Cat as they encounter a bunch of like role playing um tech um like tech bros who have rented a bunch of uh um, supervillain tech in order to have a team building exercise over a week over a weekend. It's a fun issue, fun two part um issue written two parts um two issues written by Joe Kelly with art by Terry Dodson who. I like Terry Dodson, but at the same time, it seems that he's not really meant for monthly uh, work. Is in the sense that you know, you look at these two issues and you and you get the feeling that they say like, "Hey, Terry, you want to do two issues of Spider Man?" Hey, sure, man. It's like I, I take two whole months to like do two issues of Spider Man. It's like it's like I, I can give you my a, a game here. It's like you've got um you got thirty days to do two issues. Fuck. So yeah, it's like it's not Dodson's best work but it's it's fine and after that you know we're finally going to get the answers as to like you know what peter did that alienated him from the genuine from the main superhero community at the beginning of the amazing series oh and i guess it's also time for a hot take about hey you know it's like yeah they revealed what peter did but also they killed they killed miss marvel in the process and yeah on one hand like killing off like marvel's only major muslim superhero it's like or, most visible Muslim superhero at any rate. It's like, it's definitely a bad look, especially when you realize that, Hey, she's probably going to be brought back before the end of the year, because Hey, you know, she's um, starring in the Marvels, you know, alongside Miss Marvel and Monica Rambeau. It's like at the, like 
at, like in November this year. Oh, and coincidentally, that film was also being co-written by Mr. Wells himself. So, yeah, killing her off as part of an upcoming Spider-Man storyline, or current Spider-Man storyline. It's like I'm living in the past here, thanks to Marvel Unlimited. But um, this, but it just seems like, you know, like really it's like cynical and hollow. And just like, you know, why are you doing this when we know it's not going to matter? And I guess if you want to like hear like the most generous reading of this take, you know, it's a sense of, you know, maybe Miss Marvel has uh, really made it as a superhero. I mean this in the sense that not only can she be killed, but she's likely going to be brought back like in a few months as well. Because, you know, if anyone looks at this and goes, oh, no, she's dead. Why'd you kill her? Like, I'm never going to, like, like you know, look at superhero uh, comics again because she's dead. Well, welcome to the genre, people. It's like, you know, this stuff happens all the time. And if she's not brought back either in November or before then, then I will I will eat one of my shoes. Um, doesn't matter which one, either of them. But, yeah, it's like, I don't... I, I've read two, I've been following superhero comics for so long to the sense that, you know, hey, you know, yeah, you kill Miss Marvel. It's fine. She'll be back. It's like, in fact, that the biggest problem with this, with that is that, you know, it's like, hey, you know, it's like she's that everyone who looks this, like, go, like, everyone who's like been reading this stuff as long as I have is going to go, yeah, it's not going to matter. She'll be back. I mean, everyone else who was like, you know, upset about it because of the optics. Yeah, I understand that. But, you know, just, Nah, just wait until November. Like it'll be fine. But getting back on subject, well, dark web. You know, it's not bad. It's not. Um, you know, it's like I wouldn't say it's it's not a great crossover in the sense that you know it's basically a Spider-Man story where the X-Men are basically you know guest starring in their own miniseries off to the side of things. But you know, it's like it's it's still fun. It's like it's got some got some good art like from from everyone involved. You know, obviously, you know. Like cute, like I'm um, Hubert, even with his minimalistic um, slant, but also um, McInnes and his like max, maximalist tendencies, and Rod Rod Rice and Anoto and their their respective styles. It's like, and it's like it's it's not bad, but I think if anyone wanted to just you know, anyone's just like reading Spider Man and just wants to like pick up you know, oh Spider Man Dark Web, that just has like the core issues of this of this event, yeah. I think that's probably all you all you need to do. It's like, but X Men fans are probably going to want to like at least find some way to check out the uh, like the their specific miniseries. It's like because it's got some relevant stuff as far as you know, like the characters. It's like and you know, Madeline Pryor and Havoc status as things go. So overall, Dark Web, not bad, but you know, it's like I could see a version of this where it could could been better. One that basically like fully integrates like the X. Like Spider Man and the X Men together, it's like instead of just like you know, like trying to tell their stories, like it's like like in like individually. But yeah, could be worse. Well, that sounds great. Um, do you know what you're going to be talking about next time? Uh, that's still somewhat up in the air, but I may be talking about um, Baby Teeth, which is on uh, Donny Cates's. Donny Cates' series with Jerry Brown about a, a teenage um, mother who may have given birth to the Antichrist. Oh, did I mention that it may also be um, autobi- autobiographical, autobiographical, um, in some se- some sense related to Mister Cates? Maybe. Huh. May have. Hmm? All yeah. right then. All right. Well, we'll catch you next time on Comic Picks by the Glick. All right. Later, everyone.